Hi, my name is Narayan. I'm a professor here at the Jawaharlal Nehru Centre for Advanced Scientific Research in Bangalore, India. Uh, my group has been interested in organic electronics and organic photovoltaic devices. We have a recent perspective which is appearing, which has appeared in JPCL along with my graduate students Sandeep Sachi and Anshma. Both hydrogen-based polymer solar cells are interesting and appealing in the sense that you fabricate solar cells using solution processing groups. This advantage of forming donor acceptor blend films from solution processing is also the reason for the important role of morphology and microstructure in the performance of the solar cell. Now, there are many parameters which control the morphology, some of which include the tendency of the donor polymer to crystallize, the blend concentration, that is the donor acceptor ratio, the film thickness, the thermal annealing conditions, the choice of solvents, and also the role of additives during the film formation. Each of these factors appear to be correlated to the performance of the device. There have been now excellent studies on the morphology of these blend films using a variety of X-ray and neutron based scattering techniques, mass spectroscopy based methods and ellipsometry based techniques. Even though these techniques have provided insight into the bulk morphology, their analysis and their interpretation as far as the device performance is concerned is largely based on statistical correlations. The microscopic techniques on the other hand can provide local information to get a more overall complete picture of the device. Now conventional optical techniques like confocal microscopy do not offer the high spatial resolution and hence cannot be utilized to probe the morphology at such small lens scales. Atomic force microscopy techniques have also been used to study the phase separation by utilizing the phase contrast, photoconductive and Kelvin modes of operation. Images obtained by these techniques provide a map of the local heterogeneity of the bulk and have been utilized in arriving at optimum morphology for better performance. However, the AFM based techniques are largely surface restricted and does not uh, provide bulk information. Additionally, the conductive, in the conductive AFM modes, the tip which acts as an electrode are not ideal electrodes and hence can introduce significant electric field gradients, especially in, under the illumination. And the interpretation of these images can be quite complex. So it would be really nice to have a high resolution microscopy done on real devices with real electrodes. The problem is, how do you approach the electrode? How do you circumvent the electrode? So in this regard, we in our lab have been working on this problem for the last couple of years. And we have realized that there is an ample presence of finite photo current in the periphery of the device, outside the electrode region. So if one locally illuminates the region outside the electrode, one can still get appreciable photocurrent which can be utilized to scan and image a particular region. So the presence of photocurrent in this region offers a sizable scanning area and the access to the active layer for the cantilever tip from the top without an intervening electrode per permits scanning in the near field region. The entire microscopy methods can be now centered around this region to arrive at a comprehensive morphology description at multiple lens scales. We call this approach PISA, that is photocurrent scanning of asymmetric electrodes, which is essentially a combination of AFM combined with transmission near field scanning, optical microscopy, and near field photocurrent microscopy. Now, additionally, the color of the photo excitation source can also be changed, hence, different sections of the polymer film can be formed. We believe that the state of art high resolution imaging is possible with this variety of this different combination. Hello, I'm Anshuman, a graduate student and Professor K. S. Nayansar. I work on uh, light harvesting in organic solar cells and photocurrent imaging. The PISA-E essentially is a combination of 
atomic cross microscopy, near field photocurrent microscopy, and near field optical microscopy. The atomic force microscopy essentially gives information uh, about the surface, the surface morphology. Uh, the near field photocurrent microscopy gives information about the interconnectivity of the domains, and the near field optical microscopy gives essentially a 3D information about the organization of the domains in the bulk literature. Now the source of the photo-generated carrier uh, stems from the exciton generation under the excitation volume and their disassociation at the donor acceptor interface. Now this is followed by the charge transfer, charge transport to the corresponding electrodes. So non-illuminated region or acceptor networks in the bulk interjunction fillet participate during the electron transport from the point of generation to the cathode. Hence, the near field photocurrent contrast method represents not only the active photocarrier generation region, but also provides information on the acceptor network which constitute the current pathways. This is the near field optical microscope, in short, NSOM. Conventional optical microscopes are limited in resolution. The resolution essentially is dictated or limited by the wavelength of light. The ENSOM typically uses an optical fiber that is tapered to about 50 nanometers. The resolution of the ENSOM is essentially dictated by the tip diameter of the fiber. This is a typical solar cell with asymmetric electrodes. The solar cell is placed on the sample holder. The sample is then positioned right under the ensemble tip. Hello, uh, this is Ravi. I'm a graduate student under Professor K. S. Narai. I'm working on advanced characterization of organic photovoltaics. PISA images were acquired by probing the samples with 50 nanometer beam spot using ensom tips. This ensom tip is controlled through SPM controller and high voltage piezo driver to get a two-dimensional mapping. The photocurrent data from the sample is acquired using external locking amplifier. So this combination of photocurrent image along with the transmission image using the ENSOM can be combined and one can generate the acceptor network in the bulk projection field. In this perspective, we demonstrate the usefulness of this approach by studying model systems of amorphous donor polymer acceptor networks of PCP DDBD in the crystalline, crystalline analog of the donor polymer acceptor network, which is the silicon PCP DDBD. We have studied these devices as a function of thermal treatment and solvent effects. It is to be noted that the resolution limits of these photocurrent images in the transmission ensemble images are in the range of 30 to 50 nanometer range. So we have deliberately chosen a non-optimum ratio of donor acceptor to bring out the contrast in following the trends. Following the image acquisition, we have used the tools to quantify the images, which is quite useful in rationalizing the trends. The information from these images can be utilized to reconstruct a three-dimensional tomography of the bulk hydrogen. Now, this method should be widely applicable to a various combination of donor acceptor-based devices and devices with hybrid components. So in some summary, we have developed a technique that combines all the powerful microscopy techniques along with the photocurrent contrast. And this should really bring out the microstructural aspects of bulk introduction polymer solar cells and should be widely informative and provide deeper insight. Thank you for watching the video and hope you enjoy reading the video.